This lesson helps you understand the points of discontinuity of rational functions. It's part of a series of lessons about understanding rational functions. A rational function is a ratio of polynomials where n of x is the numerator polynomial and d of x is the denominator polynomial. Since division by zero isn't defined in algebra, any value of the variable that makes the denominator zero is a place where the function is not defined. These are called points of discontinuity. A point of discontinuity is a place where the function fails to be continuous, where there is a break in the graph of the function. A place where, if you were graphing the function, you would have to lift your pencil from the graph paper, skip over a part of the graph, then put your pencil back down and continue the graph. Remember from previous lessons on polynomials, values of the variable that make a polynomial equal to zero are called the zeros of the polynomial. To find the zeros of a polynomial, set the polynomial equal to zero and solve the equation. For the first example, add 4 and divide by 3 for zero at 4 thirds. For the second example, factor the polynomial and the factors to find zeros at x equal 2 and x equal negative 2. So the real zeros of the denominator polynomial are points of discontinuity for the rational function. Notice the statement is real zeros. Remember that some polynomials have imaginary zeros and would not define points of discontinuity. For the function y equals 4 over x, when you set the denominator equal to 0, right away you have a point of discontinuity at x equals 0. Here's the graph of the function. You can see from the graph the function isn't defined at x equals 0. For the function y equals 2 over x minus 4, when you set the denominator equal to 0, you have the equation x minus 4 equal to 0. When you solve this equation, you get a point of discontinuity at x equals 4. Here's the graph of the function. You can see it's not defined at x equal 4. For the function y equals 1 over x squared minus 4, when you set the denominator equal to 0, you have the equation x squared minus 4 equal to 0. This is a difference of squares which factors into x minus 2 and x plus 2 and gives points of discontinuity at x equal 2 and x equal negative 2. Here's the graph of the function. You can see it's not defined at x equal negative 2 and x equal positive 2. For the function y equals 4 over x squared plus 1, when you set the denominator equal to 0, you have the equation x squared plus 1 equal to 0. Subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, find the square root of both sides, and you can see the solutions are imaginary. So the function doesn't have any points of discontinuity. Here's the graph of the function. You can see it's defined everywhere along the x-axis.
When a point of discontinuity is only a zero of the denominator, it's called a vertical asymptote. This is a vertical line that you can imagine the function approaching, infinitely close but never reaching. To be brief, a vertical asymptote is referred to as a VA. For the first function, the VA is the vertical line x equals 0, the y-axis. For the second function, the VA is the line x equals 4. And for the third function, there are two VAs, at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. In this example, there's a factor of x minus 1 in the numerator and the denominator. These factors have a 0 at x equal 1. When the 0 is a 0 of the numerator and the denominator, the point of discontinuity is called a hole. To see why this is a hole, notice that when x is not equal to 1, the factors of x minus 1 cancel out and you have the line y equals x plus 2. Here's the graph of that line. The graph of the rational function is the same as the graph of the line everywhere except at x equal 1, where it's not defined. So you draw a hole at that point. This lesson helped you understand the points of discontinuity of rational functions. It's part of a series of lessons about understanding rational functions. And this lesson is brought to you by the Math Fun Academy, its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new math and new equations, to boldly go where no math student has gone before.